sister and we witness to the people, like today's friends and family day, we're probably going to have probably an extra 50 to 100 people here today because it's friends and family day, okay? Our job from the pulpit is to give them the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. But it's the Holy Spirit's job to draw people to himself. Jesus said, no man can come to the Father except the Father draw him. So don't believe the lie that I can get saved whenever I want. Because that's not true. As the Spirit of God draws you, once truth is presented, now you have to do something with the truth. And there's only two things. You either accept the truth or you reject it. That's it. There's no way, you know what? Let me think about it and then never. Once the truth is presented, you will then be confronted to make a decision. You either accept what Jesus Christ did for you over 2,000 years ago on the cross, or you reject it. And understand, you're not rejecting us. You're rejecting him. Because when all of us have to stand before God, then, you know, for the judgment, now, we talked about this before. For the Christian, it's called a Bema seat. B-E-M-A. That's the seat where we will be judged and we'll receive our rewards based on what we did for God while we was on the earth. There's another judgment. This is the great white throne judgment. That is for the non-believer. All of those that rejected God, they will have to be judged and then they will be sentenced to eternal death forever. Now, let's um, bring this also. Here's the other part. The other point is, everything that happens is through faith. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. Everything in the Christian walk is all about faith. From the beginning to the end. And everything in the middle. Okay? This is the journey of faith. You start out in faith, you end in faith. That's how it works. Okay? So the Bible says that, number one, I believe it's in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, for, it says, for faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is. It is the substance, the tangibility of things hoped for, right? But those are things that are not seen. Hebrews 11, 6 says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. It says because when you come, first of all, you must believe that He is who He said He is. That's the first thing. That God says who He is, you believe that. And then, you have to understand that He is a rewarder for those that diligently seek after him. That's why when people say they're trying to find God, he says, if you're really looking for me, you'll run right into me. Why? Because I'm everywhere. Everywhere, I'm be present all at the same time. I'm everywhere at the same time. Now, I can't be everywhere at the same time. I can be here, but if I gotta go to LA or I gotta go to Orlando, I get on the plane. When I touch down on the plane, I'm all over here. I'm in Orlando. But Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit can be here in Philadelphia, be there in L.A., and also be in Orlando all at the same time. Think about that. Now, let's break down the contents of Paul's letter. First of all, the introduction and the theme of the book is in Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. Okay? So it clearly outlines, okay, the whole book breaks down, you know, Paul's letter, talks about the thanksgiving and the prayers, and then it also talks about man's need for God. Now, verse number uh, 18, chapter 1 through 18 through Romans 3.20, it talks about man's need for salvation. The only way you and I can be saved is if we realize our condition. See, if you don't realize your condition, you think you are right. You go talk to most people out there, you start telling them about their sinner and all this crazy stuff, they look at you like something wrong with you. 
You know, don't let him be the guy that's living in a nice house. Driving a nice car. He everything he wears got labels on. He can even show you he paid two hundred dollars for underwear. Who pays two hundred dollars for underwear? I don't know. I know I don't. He think he alright. He look at you and say, well, look at you, you know, you live in the shack, you know, you're standing, you're taking 10 buses to get to the church. So why should I serve a guy like that? And he's got you taking the bus. I have my Mercedes over here. All this crazy stuff. Which has nothing to do with nothing. But when you realize, though they might look poor physically, spiritually they're rich. You know why? Because everything we need is in Christ. Amen. He says everything that we need pertaining to this life. And God of this, he's already provided it for us. So he says, I'm going to give you everything you need, not only for this life, but for the life to come. See, the person that is caught up in the possession of the things, they're only caught up for the here and now. So they don't see past this. They just say, well, you know what? Everything must be all right. When the truth of the matter is they're not. So Paul makes it very clear that man is in need of salvation. Okay? The next point is... Uh, Romans 3.21 through 4.25 talks about God being the way of salvation. See, there's many ways to California. We talked about this last, you know, last week. There's many ways to California, but there's only one way to heaven. John 14.6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man can come to the Father except by me. Jesus said, I am the door. He says, if you try to go around the door, Go over the door, go underneath the door. He says, you come in as a thief in the rock. What happens to a thief? He is locked up. And then what happens? You get tossed into jail. But in this particular jail, this is eternal jail. You're going to be tossed into hell forever. Why? Not because you rejected me, but because you rejected his son. Romans 5, 1 through 8, 39, it talks about the new life in Christ. So you got to understand, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He says, old things, your old life has passed away. He says, yet behold, all things have become new. Oh yes, we sing this song. I looked at my hands, my hands looked new, I looked at my feet, and they did too. That's not true. Because if you had crusty feet before you got saved, after you get saved, you still got crusty feet. <laughs> You just say it with crusty feet. He said, go by or something. I don't know. But the whole point is, the new you started on the inside of you, not the outside of you. Your outward frame is going to be the same. This body is temporal. Y'all remember that song Sam Cook saying, the house I used to live in? Y'all ever remember that song? He said that every freedom. Okay? When they talk about that, they talk about this shell. The Bible says, you came from the dust, you going back to the dust. Right? says your spirit, your spirit, your life source goes back to God. Every spirit goes back to God. Amen. That's your life source. But your soul will have an eternal resting place. That's why you got to make reservations now. You can't wait to the day of when you're about to check out. Like I was watching this new, you know, this new series coming on. Talking about these doctors supposed to be so smart. They want to know what happens after death. I might have seen some of the advertisements on TV. I said, listen, I don't have to watch TV to tell you that. I can tell you what's going to happen by reading the Bible. Amen. The Bible says for the Christian to be absent from this body and to be present with the Lord. What does it say for the sinner? It says in Hebrews 9, it says, when we die after death comes the judgment. Hebrews 9, 27. Okay? When we die, we're going to be judged. So I don't need no TV series to tell you what's going to happen after death. I can read the Bible and tell you what's going to happen. And the Bible is going to be more accurate than what the people tell you on TV. Well, when you die, what happened? Well, you know what? I saw a light. What kind of light did you see? That's the first thing. What kind of light did you see? Because they think when they go to hell, it's going to be light down there. No, it ain't. It's going to be dark. There's be wailing and gnashing your teeth. Who wants to go to a place like that? Where when you feel the heat, you can feel it, but you can't see. And you're going to be tormented forever. Who wants to do that? Then, Romans 9, 1 through 11, 36 talks about God's magnificent game plan. That's what we have today. 
God's magnificent game plan. When Jesus first came to this earth, his purpose was to minister to the Jewish people. The Bible says in John, not the, God, not, not the uh, book of John, but the Gospel of John, it says he came unto his own, but his own received him not. John chapter 1, I think it's verse 14, says, To as many as receive him, to them he's given them the right, the power, and the authority to become the Son of God. But it's only to them that receive the gift. What gift are we talking about? The gift of salvation. It wasn't cheap, but it's offered to every man freely. So if you receive the gift and take possession of the gift, the gift is now yours. But you got to receive it. And how we get in that is that God, from the very beginning, even in the book of Genesis, when they had the fall in the garden, God's intent was to save mankind. But he came here to the Jews, and the Jews set it up because when the Jews rejected the Messiah, the door was opened up for the Gentiles. So God already knew what he was doing. That's why he had to minister to the Jews first. Then in the book of Acts, where they allowed persecution to take place, then it drove them out of Jerusalem, then they went to the further places. You read Acts 1 8, it talks about that. He says, You're going to be witnesses of the meat, first in Jerusalem. Then the Judea, Samaria, and you know, all the other most parts of the world. So he drove them out because the Jews rejected him and opened up the door for us. And we went over some of the examples of some of the people who got saved even while Jesus was on the earth. Think about the ten lepers. Remember the ten lepers? Remember the ten lepers? They all came to Jesus and asked to be healed, right? Right? To Jesus said, right? Nine of them left, kept going. Only one came back and said thank you. And he wasn't even a Jew. Jesus said one thing, go and show yourself to the priest. What happened? As they went, the Bible said, that's a powerful, that's a powerful, powerful point. As they went, in obedience to what he said, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. As they were walking to the temple to offer up the offerings of Moses and all this other stuff, as they were on their way, they were walking and they were cleansed. But it was only one of them that recognized he was cleansed and he stopped, turned back, came, fell at Jesus' feet, place of worship, worshiped him, thanked him. And he said, wait a minute, it's a problem. Did I not heal to tell y'all? But only this one came back to say thank you. So we have to understand that Israel is in the plan of God. That's our Romans 9, 1 through 11, 36. Israel is in the plan of God, even in the last day. When we are raptured up out of this earth, God has reserved 144,000 witnesses that will minister to the Jewish people. That's the word of God. Has it happened yet? No. Will it happen? Yes, it will. Just as God predicted. Israel is in his plan. God said Israel was the apple of his eye. Anybody heard this? Yet? Okay. So don't think that we can be saved without the Jewish people, because that's not true. Jesus was a Jew. He came to the Jewish mind. He was a descendant of David. So he came with the very purpose to save mankind. But ultimately, people during the tribulation period, meaning the Jewish people, the Hebrew culture, Jewish people were going to be saved during the tribulation period. Then Romans 12, 1 through 15, 13 talks about the importance of Christian conduct. People say, oh, you know what? You can't judge me. Yes, you can. We're fruit inspectors. So me inspecting the fruit is not judging me. You've been telling me all year, you an apple tree and I see lemons with it. Who told you it was an apple tree? Because I'm looking at the fruit and the fruit says you're a lemon. Because that's what people judge us of, right? Amen. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. People look at how we behave, what we do, what we say. Okay? So a lot of that has to do with that. 
That's why you can't be cussing, drinking, smoking, and doing crazy stuff, and then want to talk people about Jesus. Because <laughs> then they start looking at you. They say, wait a minute, I'm going to say something. You are doing the same thing that I'm doing. So what's so different about you? They're me. They say, well, only difference is, is you go to church and I don't. But as far as I see, we. But when people can go back and they can point to where you was and then they see you now. Y'all heard my story. Okay. Pastor Harold, when he came doing the, doing the anniversary, he summed it up. Brother came in the church and I was in the church fight. I mean, I'm throwing people over bitches like the A team and everything. I'm leaping off bitches and everything. Diving on people. And he was fighting. We were always trusting. We were always getting it in. And the people were ready to throw me out of the church, D. They were ready to throw me out of the church, writing no story. But the pastor said, no, he ain't going nowhere. He going to stay. So he gave me a special seat. <laughs> I had to sit up front with the old deacons who wore winter wool in the summertime. Anybody know about that? You don't talk about that. You need to go. These brothers had the hot, thick wool. I was hot just looking at them. I was sitting there with short sleeve shirts on sweat. I was like, I ain't supposed to be up here. Well, actually, God said I was supposed to be Because God started working on me. But everybody else said, no, no, no. Put him out. And if he had listened to them, who knows what my life would be great? Verses 15, 14, and 16, 27 it talks about the conclusion, and then Paul has a personal greeting as he closes out the book. Now, let's go right into the, uh, the message. So we're right there at verse number 16, 17, 18. We're going to pick it up from there. Paul says in verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You and I cannot be ashamed of Christ. It's amazing how everybody else can openly talk about their God, talk about their religion and what they do, but we walk around with our hands down like we lost, like we're defeated. Uh, excuse me, I read the end of the book. We win. So that means that now I can walk with my shoulders up, I can stick my chest up. We're not talking about arrogance. We're talking about confidence. In God, that people don't listen. Y'all remember that that uh, that commercial from years ago? My dog's bigger than your dog. My dog bigger than yours. Well, why? Because my dog he eats kennel ration. That was my dog. See, so we gotta understand. We eat kennel ration. Okay, so this is gonna make us stronger regardless. Matter of fact, when we walk into a fight, when we walk in with God. We're already at a majority. Regardless of how many people is in the room. When we walk in with God, we already in the majority. Because God super, he super read and supersedes everything. So if somebody says, you know, uh, he ain't gonna win. Yeah. He used David as an example. And David was facing the Philistine, right? Before he went out there, Israel had their army, right? They was all talking. And they said, oh yeah, we're gonna go out there and fight you. So they said, okay, you will. Then all of a sudden, the people moved out of the way and hit over life. Then all of a sudden, the Israelites were like, mm, I don't know about that. I don't think we're gonna do that. Let's go over here, buddy, and let's have a huddle over here. And let's talk about that. So I went over there talking about it. The giant was mocking God. Right? Yes. Right? I'm talking about it. Right? He was mocking, right? Tell him to stand up. So God gave David the courage to face the giant himself. He said, you know what? I'll fight you. He says, you come at me with a sword and a spear. He says, I'm coming at you in the name of God. And guess what? This day, we will be feeding your carcass to the vultures. He said, what? You send this dog, this flea, to fight me? Come on, let's go. He's like, where you want my shield is taller than you. I can live ten of y'all and still have time to lift my sword and my, and my shield. And I can defeat you. I can just kick the dirt and that'll be the end of you. David said, no. He said, Lord, God, my hand. When he let that stone go, the stone went right here. Dead center. Sunk in his head and he fell on the ground. And 
And God gave David the strength that everybody who was around saw him take the lion's sword. Use the sword that he was going to use on him against him and cut his head off. And then held his head and ran through the city. And the people were celebrating, saying Saul killed thousands, but David killed tens of thousands. So what happened? The Philistines left. They said, listen, if he was able to do that, we out. And they left. Man. We can't be ashamed. No, sir. Why we can't be ashamed? Because it says, for it is the power of God under salvation. That's what it is. The gospel is the good news. So somebody says, what's the gospel? It's good news. You watch the news, I guarantee you, I don't care if it's all for an hour, I don't care if they come on before 10, after 10, between 10, whatever they come on, they produce 99% of the news is bad news. Amen. Ain't that right? Amen. Right? It's bad news. That's what they talk about. Every time they talk about news, they say, this shot, this brother got rock, this brother got on fire. This, 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 this. Then they come at the end. I know you're a lady graduated. Have a good night. <laughs> we can be promoters of the good news channel. Yeah. You know why? Because we got good news. That's right. Regardless of where you are, guess what? If you're weak, God can be your strength. If you're thirsty, he can be your water. If you're hungry, he can be your bread. You need safety, he can be your security. That's good news. But what anybody want? You know what? Because the intent is to promote bad news. I can even prove it because in the church, how many people carry bad news faster than good news? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Soon as we hear something about a fellow or sister, we can get on the phone real quick and talk about that. <laughs> right? It's true. We're going to talk about good stuff. Oh, since so and so got blessed with a new car. God is working. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's doing the other. That would be too much like, right? Why talk about that? Did you hear Pastor Smith was stealing the money? I don't even know where the money is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, crazy stuff. They're, they're, you know, people are talking about that. Everybody, everybody on this side of town will hear about that. Right, right. <laughs> Forget about the thousands and thousands of people here. Let's talk about the money. That would be Amen. That's it. Says because is the power of God, and guess what? It's not just for exclusive people. When the gospel message was prepared, it was inclusive. God included everybody. everybody. He says He does not wish that anybody would perish, but that all men would come to repentance. That's God's will. God wants every person to be saved. Will they be saved? No, not because God didn't provide for them. I know when y'all was kids, when your parents set the table, the food was there. It was your choice to eat it, right? Yeah. yeah. See, hey, we got too many choices. That's See, right. I don't even want to get into that. I might spend 20 minutes talking about that. We got too many choices. See, you got five kids in the car, and everybody want to go to a different restaurant. No, we ain't going there. Yeah. We're here. So you either order from this menu or you don't eat. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I don't want Burger King. You know what? Let me get Long John Silver. You know, I don't want that. I don't want that for you. You know, let me go to Olive Garden. <laughs> That's yeah. real. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You know, church, they got the two sandwiches two for three hours. We should go there. So you run around all around town and then with the five different restaurants. Don't we go there. And God's saying the same thing. Listen, the table is prepared right here. You want to eat? There it is. It's, oh, you know what? I don't know about that because, you know, I don't eat pork. And, you know, what was that cooked in and all that? Because I have some kind of question. Who made it? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You went to the potlucks, then you had some made stuff. Yeah. You ever look at people and say, she made that? Very <laughs> cool. <laughs> Ain't she the one that got the 20 cats in the house? <laughs> 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 you been over there, yeah? And you know what you like? I noticed that that every time you over there, don't the cat stick her hand? Uh -huh. Don't she make them cookies by scratch? <laughs> don't we ask them kind of question? I'm gonna make sure it's not just me. No, it's not just you. No, it's not. 
Yeah. Verse 17. He says, It's for the Jews first. He's talking about. And he said, Then it's also for the Greek. Jew first, then the Greek. That's the non believers. Okay? He says in verse 17, For in it, when in the gospel, I'm talking for in it, the gospel, for in it, he says, The righteousness of God is revealed. Ungodliness is sin against God's person. Unrighteousness is sin against God's will. That's unrighteousness. When we sin against God's will, that's unrighteousness. When you sin against God's will, and the reason why most of us sin because we don't know God's will, and then there's some of us who do know God's will, but like Jonah, we rebel. We don't want to do that. You know why? Because that's uncomfortable. I don't really want to deal with them because the last time I dealt with them, it wasn't a good experience. So I don't want to deal with them. Bunch of Ninevites. Yeah. Right. That's what he said. Read the story. He didn't want to deal with them. But you know what? It took him to be swallowed by a great fish. To be in the fish belly for three days. He almost felt like he was going to die in it. That whale of the stomach of that big fish was going to be his grave. Then eventually he said, all right, God, I'll do it. And then the whale came and spit out on the shore. Imagine that. person come out, clothes off, tatted, half their hair going, see me wrapped around their neck. Hey, <laughs> what you here to do? I'm here to bring the good news. God said, if y'all repent, he'll spare y'all. What happened? The Ninevites repented, and God spared the people. But he had to go through all of that before he decided to do God's will. Yes, sir. He says, it is revealed from faith to faith. That was it. It's the faith wall from the beginning to the end and in the middle. He says, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Yes. Everything is a faithful. Gotta believe God is who he says he is. Number two, he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. I know without faith, I can't please God. Paul, uh, James said, you can't be double-minded. He says, you know, I think it's James 1.8. You can't be double-minded. You can't be thinking one day, you know what? I believe what God said. The next day, When your bills is all paid ahead and everything, oh, you hear everything God said. Now your bills is backed up. Now you contemplate, should I pay my time? Should I not pay my time? You know, if I pay my time, they don't cut my cable. Well, first of all, God didn't tell you to pay $300 for cable. I'm not even changing my right now. <laughs> Paying $300 for the bump. What do you got? I'm going to get that man. I'm about to kick it to the curb. Here's the point. When the builders do, we'll put everything else ahead of God. We'll say, take it, take it. Now you got nothing left. Well, God, I got you. See you next picture. Then you go the whole year. Then you tell the Lord, as soon as I get my income tax, I'm going to catch everything. <laughs> income tax comes. Church. Then you tell the God the same thing. No, it don't work. Because if I'm believing that God is a provider, Every time I write my check out, every time I take that cash and stick it in the envelope, and I'm talking about giving God the proper amount, not what I think is that. You know, the preacher said you made $3,000 week, you're supposed to give the Lord $300. This is the gross, not the net. Well, I only bought $1,800 home, so I'm going to give him $180. No, you made $3,000. You give God his $300. All the time. Just saying. And then I trust God 
to meet my needs because if he gets the 10, he'll bless the 90. But if I keep the whole 100, he'll blow on all of it and I'll lose it all. Now, he says, for the wrath, we're going to talk about the wrath of God. The wrath of God. The wrath of God. People don't talk about that. People say, you know, God's a loving God. How would God send me to hell? Well, let me ask that question for you. First of all, hell was never prepared for you. To go to Now, but God will not superimpose his will on your will. You know what? Because when he made you, he made you a free will agent. In other words, you are a free agent. You are free to sign on whatever team you want to sign up for. And unfortunately, there's only two teams. There's Team Jesus and there's Team Lucifer. Guys, out. Who was team you sign up for? Okay? And then if I choose not to sign up with Team Jesus, then Satan will demand me back. You know what? You didn't accept Jesus. Guess what? The devil has already drafted you. You was playing on this team for a long time. But see, what happened was God sent goodness and mercy, right? And you know what happened? They were scouting you out. I can preach right there. They were scouting you out. They went back to Jesus and gave the report. And God said, I want him on my team. Do what you got to do to bring him on our team. Put the contract in front of him and let him know everything he needs is paid in full. How can you turn a deal down like that? You're going to play with the ultimate coach. He ain't never lost a game. You're going to be playing for, you know, that's one of the things too. See, you want to play with a great coach, right? But you also want to play with the team that has a good owner. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I want to be with a team that has a good owner that takes care of his players. No. That's a sermon, bro. Yes, yeah, sir. I can that. Can you tell me a little bit of talk that. No, I'm talking about. I got the ultimate head coach. Yes, sir. He's got the ultimate game plan. And guess what? He's going to use the Holy Spirit. I ain't got to, you know, take performing enhancing drugs. You know why I got to do that? Because the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to aid me to make the play. Amen, sir. All I got to do is get in the position. There you go. So I can score. Come on now. But when I score, I gotta make sure I give glory to the right person. Yeah. See, I wanna turn around and take and put the spotlight on me. Because it was never about me. Right. It was always about him. Yeah. So since it's about him, I gotta make sure that every time I score, I gotta thank him because he put me in the right position to receive the pass so I can score. Come on now. Script that. Script that out, Pastor. Come with that one right there. That's a good one. He says. God's righteousness is revealed from heaven. And guess what? It is against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness. Ungodliness, unrighteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is the right standing with God. And I can't be righteously right with God until my heart is right with God. Because if I'm my alignment is off, what's going to happen with your car? It's going to pull from one side or the other. And that's what happens after going back and forth, back and forth. No, Jesus wants to be the person to give you the perfect, the proper alignment. So you're sinning, but not in yourself, isn't it? Amen. Amen. He says right here, he says, Suppress the truth in unrighteousness. The Bible says we have to be careful not to call right wrong and wrong right. That's the society we live in today. What used to be wrong, people call it right. But what's an example? Let's talk about that. Same sex marriage. The Bible clearly says in Genesis, God intended a man and a woman, that's it. Not even pregnant. Right. Not Steve and Mike. Right. No. Brother and Steve, Eve and Mike. That's it. But no, 
what we do is we say, you know what, that sounds good, but you know what, I think we should make our own laws. And guess what? Matter of fact, we're going to fight so hard until we get to the Supreme Court and then they'll make it the law of the land. And then they're willing to shut down every Christian business, every Christian church that don't support it. Well, I'm going to just put it on the record because I'm going to take it. If any person come to me that's of the same sex and say, Pastor Smith, can you marry us? I sure can. Amen. Why not that? Because that's against what God said. Amen. It goes against all I believe, and I can't do it. If somebody don't marry us, you're right, just not me. Amen. Amen. Verse 19. It says, got two minutes. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, right? Now verse 19 says, because what may be known as God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. So you gotta understand, people try to act like they're ignorant and they don't know nothing. Right. The truth of the matter is you do know something. Because when you woke up, meaning when you came into this world, right, as you grew up and you developed, you knew some things. Contrary to what people teach in fashion, they want to make the, the, the earth billions of years old, all strange stuff. You know, they want to tell you about this, tell you about that. Now, he says all you got to do is look around and you can see that if this was made, there was a designer. There was a creator. There was somebody who planned this out. Not the crazy stuff they told you that some planets exploded. We had this big bang theory and all this kind of stuff. And I tell people, yes, there was a big bang theory. Go to Genesis chapter 1. It says, in the beginning, boom, God created the heavens and the earth. That's when the bang happened. When God spoke, things came to pass. Amen. Amen. That's when the bang happened. When God said, let there be, be became. That's what we're talking about. He says, you do know. All of us were born with light. We just decided, you know what? I don't want that light. <laughs> so I'm going to go without it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When you were doing your do, when you was out there doing your thing, how many people want to do stuff with the lights on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm mad when you're the only one. Every time I want to do stuff, turn that light out. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right? That's right. Now that's turn right. That light out. But see, what I didn't realize was that God can see a black ant on a black hill in a black night. Come on, sir. So it don't get too dark when God can't see you. Even though we think he can't see you. Anybody ever went somewhere and told Jesus to stay outside? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I know I can go in. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, hey, Jesus, let me go in and this, this one. I keep watch going. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> People do it though, brother. <laughs> all of us did. Yes, sir. We all told the truth. We all did. Yes, sir. Right? So then he says, and he close, for since the creation, right, of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. Amen. The visible, the invisible things of God, we now see them. I remember when I was growing up. There were certain things we just didn't do, especially on Sunday. Some of y'all might not talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is even before I got saved. Y'all remember the streets? People went to church. I didn't necessarily go to church, but people went to church. Okay, before I got saved, though. And people kind of hung around, right? Doing their own thing, whatever it is. But you ever notice when you got there to church, you didn't cuss? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You was cussing on yourself when you got to the church at home. <laughs> yeah, man, you know what I mean? You know, that's how we do it. But now, people don't even care. No. We was at the funeral yesterday, and the brother was cussing in the church. My Lord. He didn't care. He was in there talking about man, and them MFs and all the crazy stuff. And I was standing behind him just looking at him. I'm like, really? I mean, really? even talk about it wow. And the fact that she was in the church and he was cussing, had his hat on and everything. I said, see, <laughs> he is one of the people that, that God is talking about. He is definitely a God. <coughs> he went to do Jesus and Jesus was standing next to him. He didn't care. No. He no. did not care. 
And as a result, that's what happens. He says right here in close, he says, being understood by the things that are made. He says, you know what? People can know who I am based on how things are made. Because if it was true, number one, you came from a monkey, right? That's what they said, right? They told you came from a monkey. You know what I'm saying? They said, we got the same characteristics as the chimpanzee. That's what they said, right? That's what they said. Okay. Now, somebody also told you, you know, uh, you came from a store. Anybody read that story? You know, they call, you know, the number 1 800 734 dial a baby, right? So you dialed up and you told them what kind of baby you wanted, and then the store just delivered it. Yeah. Well, if that was all true, why did it all stop? Right, right, right. If I was a monkey, right? That's what they said, I evolved. If I was a monkey, where did my tail go? <laughs> I have a tail right here, but I'm saying, where did my tail go? Right, right, right. If I was a monkey, where did the hair go? And God made each and every one of you, you all have your own DNA. Did you know that? That's true. Nobody has the same DNA as you. Nobody. You know what that means? That means that all of you are originals and not copies. There you go. Amen. Because if that was the case, you would all look the same, you know? Yeah, man. Amen. No, God gave you your own DNA, which makes you your own individual. He says right here, we're done. He says, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. What is he talking about? Nobody would ever be able to say on the last day, we stand before God and have to give an account for the deeds that we did in this body on this earth. Nobody, doesn't matter. You could be in a long, a long way. In some remote island, you never heard about Jesus. You can't even use that as an excuse. Why you never got saved. The fact that you was on the island, you might have seen some palm trees, you might have caught some fish, you might have had the sun come up, give you heat by day, you know, the clouds give you coolness at nighttime, right? All that kind of stuff. He says, if you just do that, that would be more than enough to let you know that I existed. Amen. So you won't be able to use that as an excuse. Amen. Okay.